Remnant 2 is a damn fun game, but it can be a little overwhelming if you've never played a Souls-like game before. Hi, I'm Fallout, a guy who spends way too much time gaming, and today we're going over 9 tips and tricks for getting started with Remnant 2. Tip number 1. Detect enemies with infinite stamina. One great feature Remnant 2 has that you might not notice right away is that if no enemies are near you, you won't lose any stamina when running, which was probably put in because the only thing more annoying than escort missions in video games is having the game put the kibosh on you running around as much as you damn well please, like some kind of invisible no fun lifeguard. But because stamina only drains when enemies are nearby, you can actually use that feature as kind of a bootleg enemy detection system. If you're running around with unlimited stamina, as you do, but then suddenly out of nowhere you notice that your blue bar on the HUD is dipping down, well get ready for a gunfight, Junior, because you ain't alone anymore. Tip number two, watch your weight. If you're new to Souls-like games, you may soon learn, especially in your first boss fight, that dodging is really, really, really important unless you have a fetish for being killed. However, you gotta learn that not all dodges are created equal. Depending on how heavy your armor is, that is going to affect how you dodge in-game. The heavier your armor, the more your encumbrance will be affected. As your encumbrance goes up, your dodges will get slower, with fewer iframes while also consuming more stamina. There are four different dodge kinds, light, medium, heavy, and ultra. A light dodge is the fastest dodge that comes with no stamina cost penalty. A medium dodge comes with a 25 5 stamina penalty, a heavy dodge has about a 50% stamina penalty, and an ultra dodge is not really what I would call a dodge at all. You basically flop straight down to the floor like someone dared you to chug an entire bottle of SoCo, and it has a 75% stamina penalty. And now that you know this, be very aware of your armor's weight when you find new gear to equip out in the world. Yeah, heavy armor will protect you better from incoming damage, but it also comes with less mobility, which can really F you up if you're trying to dodge hard-hitting attacks up close. Which brings us to tip number three, don't spam dodge. Yay, you decided that you want to go with lighter armor to be more nimble during a boss fight, but that doesn't mean you can start rolling around the floor all willy-nilly like a coked up member of Cirque du Soleil. While dodging is a wildly powerful tool that can help you stay alive, spamming the dodge button is not the way. As a Souls-like game, many enemies in Remnant 2 are straight up foaming at the mouth hoping that you do dodge spam because one close range melee whack after a mistimed dodge can severely F you up, often leading to kind of a snowball effect where you just get shoved into a locker repeatedly and you have to start the whole damn fight all over again. Tough melee enemies in Remnant have tells and specific timing that you're gonna need to keep an eye out for. Much like Bill Murray in Groundhog Day, a lot of this is gonna boil down to trial and error and learning via repetition. But when you start learning how each enemy attacks, you'll be able able to properly time your dodges rather than just mashing the button and getting your ass kicked half the time. Tip number four, always mod your weapons. Mods in Remnant 2 are awesome. They let your weapons do wild new things in a big, big way. Even right out the gate, the first two mod options I picked up, a healing shot and a burning shot, really started putting in work right away. The best part about weapon mods is once you've bought one, you can feel free to equip that on almost any weapon whenever you want. Try to think of it as a very well worth it one-time purchase for a lot of the weapons in your arsenal. And some of the weapon mods can get really wacky and again, god damn are they effective. Tip number five, listen up. Sound cues in Remnant are really helpful in terms of you not getting taken by surprise and completely mollywopped. So make sure you go into your game settings and make sure the audio is at a level where you can really hear them sound cues. There's two in particular you should keep your ears peeled for. One is a cheap knockoff Inception foghorn noise that sounds kind of like this. That would indicate that there's going to be a bunch of low-level trash enemies trying to mob up on you shortly. And the other sound to be aware of would be this. That little chime means you're about to go up against an elite enemy. Big, beefy boys with a lot of health who require a bit more effort and damage than your run-of-the-mill trash. You may not really notice the sound the first few times you hear it, but it's an important heads up to take note of. Tip number six, optimize relic fragments. I'm gonna completely tell on myself, but that's fine because I live a life without shame. The first few hours of playing, I really didn't even know how to change my relic fragments at all. Every time I picked one up, I kinda assumed it was already going to work 
work for me right away. But hey, my dumbassery is your gain because here's how they work. Open your character menu and go down to your dragon heart item in the bottom left and inspect. There in the bottom left corner, those are your relic fragments and you can choose which ones you want to have equipped anytime you want. I actually had melee ones equipped and I wasn't even using a melee character, GG. So with that in mind, whenever you get a chance, go through what relics you've managed to find and equip the ones that complement your build and playstyle. They don't put up huge crazy numbers, but they do help you all the time, literally for free, so there's no reason to not customize. Tip number seven, take note of your weapon's range. Weapons in Remnant 2 have a couple of key stats, two of them being your ideal range and your fall off range. Now, while you can hit enemies from downtown with a lot of weapons, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should. The ideal range of a weapon is obviously the intended sweet spot of your weapon. Meanwhile, the further and further away you get from your fall off range, the worse your weapon will perform overall. This can be kind of tricky to get a handle on because it's not like you can whip out a damn measuring tape in the middle of a gunfight. However, you can get a sense for the weapon by just using it a lot in the field and developing a bit of muscle memory, or you can go to the in-game firing range at Ward 13. The damage numbers that pop up when you hit one of the tire targets can give you a pretty good idea of how far away you can be before you start to experience damage drop off and other whackness. Tip number eight, know when to walk away from a boss fight and when to come back. Not gonna lie to y'all, if you're completely new to this type of game, you might completely be taken surprised by the difficulty of some of the boss fights, especially if you're a solo player. They can be extremely unforgiving. One mistimed dodge or move and you're basically down for the count. I know a lot of us out there probably have that mentality of, I ain't quitting until I win, but there's really no shame in taking a break from certain fights. Not because you're giving up forever, but maybe you want to go get stronger first. First boss fight of mine, I got destroyed so repeatedly, I finally decided to go take a break. I actually wound up getting better gear, more consumables, and a few extra levels. And when I came back to that boss fight, mopped the freaking floor with that guy. Don't get over frustrated. Take time to clear your head and maybe get better gear too. And finally, tip number nine, learn about class changing and multi-classing. The character classes in Remnant 2 are called archetypes. And even though you'll start the game as one particular archetype, you'll have the ability to not only completely change your archetype if you want, you'll also be able to multi-class. To unlock additional archetypes, you'll need to first get their respective engrams. You may have noticed certain vendors in Ward 13 each selling odd little trinkets for around 1500 scrap. These items are actually how you unlock each engram for each archetype. The medic engram is the medic pin from Dr. Nora. The hunter engram is the rusty metal from Brabus. The handler engram is the old whistle from Mudtooth and so on and so forth. There's actually more classes in the game than those listed here, but you get the idea. When you have the correct engram that you want, go to Wallace at the docks in Ward 13. Talking to him will give you the option to unlock another archetype, provided you have a few other materials as well. Keep in mind that even if you do multi-class, and you should, you can only get the benefits of one prime perk, the one of your main archetype, which again, you can change if you want. Just know that no matter how you multi-class, you'll only have one prime perk active, the one of your main archetype again. Hit the like button if any of these helped you, and if you've got any tips of your own for your fellow player, be sure to leave them down in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on stream.